Good afternoon. I'm Lorna Lucas, Senior Manager of Provider Education for the Association of Community Cancer Centers. I'm eager to introduce Ms. Tracy Virgilio, our expert presenter for the sixth e-course of the series hosted by the Institute for Clinical Immuno-Oncology, or as we refer to it, iCLEO. We'll discuss managing patient expectations while on immuno-oncology therapies. As you may know, the ICLEO initiative focuses on preparing the multidisciplinary team for the challenges and opportunities presented by immunotherapy and includes other vital resources such as newsletters, papers, scholars programs, and a national conference which we just held past month in Philadelphia. Please visit www.accc-ic.org to browse all of our offerings. Now for today's e-course, I'm pleased to introduce Tracy Virgilio, who serves as nurse, I'm sorry, registered nurse project coordinator for the West Virginia Medical Institute. In this role, she's responsible for demonstrating project management skills and implementing assigned projects as part of the Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organization. In this capacity, she's involved with recruitment of providers of various types to participate, collaborating with stakeholders in the state of Delaware and participating in network activities. She assists healthcare providers and organizations in problem solving, including serving as an external resource for quality improvement, data, evidence-based practices, and performance improvement strategies. Previously, she served as Director of Patient Advocacy and Clinical Research in a very busy multi-physician outpatient oncology practice for over eight years, and has over 16 years of clinical research and oncology experience. She also earned her BSN degree from Newman University. Now for just a few housekeeping notes I'd like to point out. Please feel free to submit questions for Tracy by typing your questions in the box on your dashboard. I will pose questions to Ms. Virgilio at the end of her presentation. The webinar will be archived and will be available on the iCLEO website by the end of the week. So by the end of today, I hope to have that up. And you'll also receive an email with the link if you'd like to share it. Now I'll send it over to Tracy to kick off the webinar. Thank you, Lorna, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, this is truly an exciting time for ACCC and iCLEO. Um, fresh from the Portland, Oregon meeting and um, with Phil Ho hosting its first iCLEO meeting, this has been a great month. Um, ACCC has been doing some exciting things and it's really neat to be a part of that. Next slide, please. I do not currently have any relevant financial relationship to disclose. Next slide, please. And I don't intend to discuss any off-label uses um, during this presentation. Next slide, please. The objectives for today is to talk about the overview of immuno-oncology in its simplest terms and addressing some of those expectations um, that your patients will have while receiving the IO therapies. And also to provide you with some resources needed to help um, you make this a smooth transition in your practice. Next slide, please. So before we get started, um, let's talk about what IO therapy is. And they are basically the therapies that work with one's own immune system to fight off cancer. In traditional methods such as surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, they all work to target cancer cells directly in different ways. And immuno-oncology medications work by going after the immune system and not just the, um, the tumor. And they can also selectively recognize the cancer cells as well as continuously adapt to the cancer cells over a period of time, which provide a long-term response to the cancer. Next slide, please. So why immuno-oncology? It's a better quality of life, longer survival status. Um, evidence is suggesting that the effects of the cancer cells from these therapy may last a long time. In other words, it's training the immune system to respond even after remission. So it's a pretty cool idea. Clinicians are seeing that the side effects of immuno-oncology medications are more manageable than traditional chemotherapy. And these side effects will be more manageable as long as your patients, um, the lines of communication are left open between the healthcare provider, the caregiver, and um, the patient. 
Um, and we will discuss side effect management and communication in some later slides. Next slide, please. The real winners in life are the people who look at every situation with an expectation they can make it work better. This is especially true in our own field, and we see that every day. We are constantly looking for ways to improve the care for these patients and extend their life. And with these new therapies, it, we can do that, and we can achieve those goals. Next slide, please. Um, patient expectations. They're going to continuously evolve as the immuno-oncology evolves and um, as the new indications of IO therapies enter the market. So we need to continuously make those changes and talk to our patients as, they, as um, these new therapies come along. And not only with um, IO therapy are they going to evolve, but you're going to have other challenges that are going to evolve as well. Um, you're going to have financial support, the treatment plannings may change, and patient support is just to, to name a few of the challenges that are going to also come up um, with the IO drugs. Next slide, please. In order for your program to be successful, you really must have a physician champion on board. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, a person who's going to be a strong leader, who's going to back the, the program from start to finish, um, someone who is well-versed in immuno-oncology data and who's willing to look at the new data as it comes along, um, and who's willing to make the changes needed for that particular regimen, um, and willing to make those changes to the treatment of the patient, to manage their side effects better, as well as looking at the bottom line of the practice. So the financial implications of immuno-oncology not only affects the patient, but it's also going to affect your practice if it's not handled correctly. So you need to include your financial counselors, your billing, your nursing staff, your physicians in this process in order for it to be successful. And also, don't forget to include the patient. They expect to be kept up to date on the information regarding their treatment. Next slide, please. People diagnosed with cancer are almost three times more likely to declare bankruptcy than those without the disease, a large uh, new study suggests. And this has been a topic at ACCC, um, and we heard it last week at the, um, the conference, and it's just building. So we need to, there are a lot of resources triple A, for, triple, um, for ACCC, um, on their website, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, it's not just the, the patient that's are affected, but it's also the practice that's affected when it comes to the financial issues. Next slide, please. Um, the financial stressor with IO therapy, either alone in chemotherapy, has been huge. Um, you need to explain to your patient, and we've done this in our own practice, that you'll be reviewing their claims for issues so that you won't be any big surprises when their bill comes, and let them know what your policy is for payment up front so there are no surprises as well. Um, we've done that. We've pulled patients aside, and we've talked to them up front. Um, we've looked at the benefit investigations first, and then talked to the patient, and then decided which ways to go for the patients. Um, this way they know what to expect financially. They're able to make those arrangements ahead of time. and Hopefully, it will lessen the financial stress for your patients. Talking with the patient and the caregiver ahead of time can really make a big difference, not only for them, but your practice as well. And I will tell you from personal experience, enroll every single patient into a patient assistance program when possible. Try to find um, copay assistance. Um, as well. It's not only going to help the patient, but it's going to help the practice's bottom line, and it'll keep everybody covered in the event that there's some type of issue with the claim um, or some type of issue with the patient's insurance, whatever, but it's a huge, it's huge, um, it was a huge thing in our practice, and um, it was always welcomed when we had a problem with a drug that was not getting paid. We could always go back to the company and say, what can you do to help us? So 
basically you want to stay on top of those claims. You want to let the patient know that you are there for them. You also um, want to stay on top of that claim. So it goes back to whoever so you can talk to and getting that um, addressed. And in doing so, we'll encourage your patient to let you know also if there's some financial issues going on at home. Um, and then they'll tell you sooner rather than later when there's um, a big, huge balance coming along. And I'm going to refer you to ACCC's website because there's a huge amount of information from experts in their field. So um, please refer to that website if you have questions. Next slide, please. The explanation of IO therapy, um, checkpoint inhibitors address a major escape mechanism of tumor cells. That is, tumor cells express checkpoint proteins on their cell surfaces, and these proteins serve to dampen the immune system's response to the antigenic proteins that cancer cells also express. The checkpoint inhibitors target inhibited and inhibit the activity of the checkpoint proteins. In simplest terms, IO therapies target the immune checkpoints, making the inhibitors reactivate and enhance the immune response, which has been able to shown to induce the regression of cancer cells. So this is pretty exciting therapy for, um, for cancer patients because it's actually given them a longer survival status um, than we have seen in the past. Next slide, please. Side effects. Um, when it comes to side effects, talk to your patient and explain to them that each patient will react differently. And I'm sure you have seen this in your own practice. Um, you could have 10 to 20 patients come in and the 21st patient will have an issue and the others have not had any problems whatsoever and then all of a sudden you have this issue. So my takeaway from this is empowerment is key. Talk to your patients about the different side effects. Each IO is going to work differently, and create handouts based off the prescribing information to give those to the patient so they know what to expect. Tell them when to call in order to avoid serious adverse events, and create triage protocols within your practice for specific drug or side effects that you're going to see with these drugs. This will ensure that the side effects are managed quickly, okay, and treatment is faster and is it's targeted to that patient and that specific drug. Teach back or show me is another great um, way to make sure that your patients have understood what you taught them. Teach them in short sessions and once you are done, ask them to explain what they've learned in their own terms and then um, make any changes or additions as needed. Um, it's a great tool to empower your patients and to get them engaged in their treatment. Um, with ER visits, um, we found this great tool is um, making sure that the patients have, an, in case of an IO emergency card, um, it will instruct the healthcare provider with information on who to contact regarding that particular therapy. Um, the IO therapies are up and coming, and they're coming very fast, very furiously, and we don't know what all the side effects we're going to see with these. So it's very important to keep um, the patients abreast of all that information and make sure that they can, can communicate to the ER physician or the nursing staff to call their oncologist or their provider of the therapy. and get some feedback so they know how to treat them in the ER. Um, since we don't know what the long-term effects are going to be with the IO therapies, it's also important to um, have the patient in a survivorship program where they can be monitored, um, again, in case any new information comes into play and um, this can be addressed if a new indication comes up or a new side effect is seen. You can address that with the patient at that time with the survivorship um, visit. Next slide, please. ACCC has a great website um, on managing adverse events, and I'm going to refer you back to that um, website or that webinar 
Um, it's a great tool for best practices and managing those events. Next slide, please. First, seek to understand, then to be understood. This is a great quote. Um, next slide, please. It's great for the effective communication. We need to listen before we react. Um, we need to build trust. We need to keep the lines of communication open between the patients as well as the caregivers. Um, the nurses need to go back to those first days of nursing school and remember to ask those open-ended questions. Um, when we do this, it will give you more insight as to what the patient's needs are. One patient may be having side effect information issues. Um, one patient might be having financial issues. So on any given day, the expectations of the patients are going to change with your chemotherapy and their visits and what problems they're coming into the pro practice with or your um, infusion center. And it'll, um, it's also well known that having a good patient physician staff rapport and taking the time will make it more likely the patient will open up to you about what is going on at home and if they're having any side effects. So it's, and I know it's very hard to do nowadays because um, we have understaffing, we have electronic medical records, and the patients don't always feel like they have our full focus. So you know this as part of our own, um, our own practice, but just keep the patient as your only focus at that point in time and make sure that they're, they're your only patient. Let them feel like you're, they're your only patient for the day. Next slide, please. Caregiver roles. Um, you want to identify who the caregiver is, and is it a spouse, significant other, is it the son, the daughter, the mother, the father, and what the relationship is like, because sometimes that can affect how treatment is going. It can affect what's going on in the house, um, and also financially, that's also going to be a big issue. And you want to make sure that you engage the caregiver when teaching about treatment options, and especially about the side effects information teaching, um, because the caregivers are the best person to, um, to watch what's going on. They see the patient every day. They can see those changes that you may not see or the patient might not tell you. And I'm sure you've all had those patients that have told you that you're, they're okay and they're not. And then when you talk to the caregiver and you pull them aside, they're, they're telling you, oh, no, I've seen this going on, I've seen this going on, or I've seen this going on. So it's, it's a great tool to make sure that you include the caregiver um, while you're talking, especially with the IO therapies. Next slide, please. Um, Clinical trials is um, very big with IO therapy. I am a huge proponent of clinical trials. It's how we made those IO therapies, and we continue to make those advances. Um, it's been great to see in earlier trials. I've had two patients where they were given a three-month survival status, and then they landed up lasting five years. And I think it's just great to see to see that um, both one wasn't expected to make it to her daughter's wedding, and then she landed up seeing um, daughter's wedding and two graduations. So we're seeing a lot longer survival with these new medications. So it's just it's exciting to see that, and it's great to be a part of that. Next slide, please. Um, here are some sites for finding some clinical trials if your practice or facility does not participate in the clinical research. I understand that some clinicians find that they don't want to send their patients to other facilities and fear that they won't get those patients back. Um, that has not been my practice. I have seen where clinicians and ourselves and our practice, uh, we have been able to work together. Either the patient went there for a clinical trial or they were with us with a clinical trial and we just kept the lines of communication open between the two practices and it worked out very well for the patient. Next slide, please. In conclusion, Dr. Britton from the Cancer Immunotherapy Association has emphasized that immunotherapy is not a new compound or new drug, but part of the toolbox to fight cancer. Um, with this ever-changing landscape, 
healthcare workers will need to look at each patient situation differently in order for IO therapy to work, making, to, making them to feel like they're the real winners. Next slide, please. Um, ACCC, again, has a wealth of information, and I'm going to refer you back to that, especially for the financial advocacy piece of it. Um, it's a great tool. We've used it in our practice, and I know um, a lot of other people are using it in their practice as well. So I would, um, this is probably one of your Bibles that you want to go to. Next slide, please. Um, ACCC also has a lot of training and education. We have a ton of conferences, workshops, and videos. Um, this is the sixth one in the series on IO management. Um, so if you have not gotten to be able to attend any of those meetings, they are on the website. So you um, may want to go back and refer back to them. Um, next slide, please. Um, here are some more tools and resources, um, and if you have any questions, I'm sure Lorna can help you um, get you where you need to be with um, finding the resources that you need for your practice on, on um, all, the pra all the programs that they offer. Next slide, please. Um, again, here are some more workshops that, are involved, that they have um, at ACCC. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. Here's my contact information. Questions? Thank you so much, Tracy. That was wonderful. Um, so basically, Tracy, I just do have a question. Um, in your experience um, with using the, these um, IO agents, um, what have you seen as a biggest uh, concern or the biggest fear that a patient who um, you know might be newly diagnosed, they, they walk through the door and you're seated with them, you know, what are you hearing from those patients? Basically, it's um, the fear of the unknown, I, and that's with any chemo, with any patient receiving therapy. They don't know what they're going to expect. And with keeping the lines of communication open and talking with them, we're finding it's making it a little bit a lot easier for them to get through uh, the IO therapy as well as just regular chemotherapy. I think that's about it for today. Um, again, thank you so much for everyone who's joined us. Um, and thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing your experience and your insight with us. Um, and this presentation was just really um, enlightening for all of us, um, especially for all the work you've done directly with um, the patients that we all serve. Um, I just want to let everyone know that the webinar slides um, and the audio presentation will be available online. I hope to have them up by the end of today, um, and I will email everyone um, who registered. So if you know if you have a colleague or a friend who wasn't able to make it, um, everyone will be receiving an email with the link to access that. Um, and also, our website again is accc-iclio.org, and we have a wealth of information. It's really our hub um, for implementing immuno oncology specifically in the community setting. Um, so please check out our resources. Um, we have plenty of archived webinars. We have newsletter articles that are available. Um, and we have also um, our media newsroom where we have all of the happenings in this field right now. Um, and stay tuned. Uh, we are developing a, a scholar's module that um, should be interesting as well to provide a a comprehensive understanding of immuno oncology to really help you help your patients. Um, so thank you and I hope everyone has a safe and wonderful weekend.